Hello and welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners of class 11, today we will do the poem, the first poem in the first lesson, a photograph. Learners, we have read, discussed, appreciated and have done lot of activities in the first lesson by Kushwan Singh, a portrait of a lady. We know Kushwan Singh was trying to describe, depict the picture of his grandmother in different dimensions as a young lady, an old lady and the very what's it, a stooping lady, when very, 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 very old and at last he dies. And in all this, he was trying to bring out the portrait of the lady. That is why he rightly titled it as portrait of a lady. So, photographs convey many, many things. The visuals convey many, many things. Learners, if you go back in your own life, you are now maybe 14, 15 or at the most 16. But if you look at your childhood photograph, uh, it takes you back to different kind of world. So, this poem, a photograph also tells us many things. Okay. Let us let us set uh, some objectives of this poem. Firstly, we will read and reread to appreciate the poem and how the ideas and the images the poem gives and we will interpret the poem with our own understanding connecting with our life means how you feel about your past and the photographs of your life that is what. With me is Kriti from the same department. Hello sir and hello learners and I am looking forward to have this discussion on the poem of photograph. Very good photograph. Okay. Let me ask you learners. And Kriti, you yes, too. Uh, what do you feel when you look at a photograph of your school days? Means primary school days. Now you were in class eleven. The, the, when you were when you were a child and the as an infant or in primary school or even high school classes six, seven, eight. What do you feel? How, how do you feel about it? Sir, I feel very happy whenever I see those photographs because it takes me back to that particular moment I was having in my classroom. I was having at that moment in time. And also, uh, most of us feel that, oh, that time was much better than what, <laughs> we, are <laughs> what we are now. In, yes. So, learners, this is what the poem photograph is telling us. So, a photograph by Shirley Towson. We do not have to much bother about the poet. Uh, I am not going to talk about the poet at all here. And you may search Google and find out, but the idea of the poem, the language used in the poem. Come on, without wasting our time, let us look at the poem. Kriti will read out to us the poem. Come on. Sure, sir. A photograph by Shirley Tolson. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling. Each one holding one of my mother's hands and she the big girl, some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera, a sweet face, my mother's that was before I was born. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. Some 20, 30 years later, she would laugh at the snapshot. See Betty and Dolly, she would say, and look how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was her past, mine is her laughter. Both wry with the laboured ease of loss. Now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It silence silences. It silence silences. Fine learners, this is how we should read a poem as a whole and appreciate it. Do not bother about uh, the meaning of individual words if you do not understand some of them. No issue because the idea. Okay, look at uh, what is the poem about in general? Let us not bother whether you understood or not. What is the po poem about? Sir, maybe the poet is talking about a photograph of her mother which she has found and she is talking about that particular photograph. And two of her cousins. Yes. She was not there. She was not there and her mother was with her cousins hmm. on a beach holiday. Fine. Learners, now I am going to ask you to close your eyes and listen to it. 
here comes the poem again to you in audio form. This is from your audio book available at NROER, U Patsala, NCIT website, everywhere you can uh, decode the QR code and listen to it. Now, come on, let us listen to it. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went pedaling, each one holding one of my mother's hands and she, the big girl, some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera, a sweet face, my mother's, that was before I was born, and the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. Some 20, 30 years later, she would laugh at the snapshot, see Betty and Dolly, she would say, and look how they dressed us for the beach, the sea holiday. Was her past, mine is her laughter, both wry with the labored ease of loss. Now she had been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived, and of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It silence silences. Learners, let us look at the poem. The poet or the narrator uh, looks at a photograph in which his mother with, her, with his two cousins, sisters, they walk on the seesaw and that is what the photograph tells. But for him, many more things then how the, how the mother looked at the photograph later, then look at it, how they dressed up as. So, many, many things and, and he says that the, the water uh, which takes, a, which comes and moves f uh, on the seashore, no? uh, ebbing kind of thing in which, uh, uh, you know, you must have felt when you stand on water, uh, then your feet uh, sl slightly goes down as water, uh, water takes away the sand. So, the, this there are many things the poet is trying to tell that the time has taken away everything. Now, uh, the smile and laughter of the mother is gone and many more things are gone, time has passed. Okay, come on, let us take up uh, the first uh, part of the poem and, and, and discuss it. Come on, let me, let me read out the first poem, uh, first part of the poem to you. A photograph, a cardboard shows me how it was when two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands, and she the big girl, some twelve years or so, all three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera, a sweet face, my mother's, that was before I was born, and the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terrible transient feet. The cardboard. Look at um, uh, the poet in good old uh, days. The means not long ago. Even today, it is there. The photograph. You go to a studio. You take for nowadays. We take everything on mobile or something. Selfie has become much popular. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, in good old days, there will be a kind of you know, cardboard like in mm. which the uh, photo photograph is uh, you know framed. Uh, yeah, framed. And it tells then in over the period that cardboard gets uh, you know a kind of you no know, old. With, with the fading color and the photograph remains and, and we can remove it and uh, put, it, put it in another frame. That is what the, the cardboard shows how it was when the two girls holding the hands of the mother, uh, his mother uh, walking in the seashore. Then look at, look at the uh, point he says uh, two small girls and the big girl that was his mother. That is one. The, the second one he says, uh, they were smiling through their hairs, you know, the unkempt hair in the, in the, in the seashore. Then, then uh, all of a sudden, the poet takes, takes that they were all laughing through their hair to the uncle who took the photograph, because all of them, the, the photographer was, an uncle, was, was the uncle. But later he says, all, the, all of a sudden there is a movement in the poem, look at the, look at the line. And mother, sweet, they were they had sweet faces, and my mother's that was before I was born. Okay, the the young mother with smiling face, or oh, this was this was thing of the past, and the sea, 
which uh, which appears to have changed less c it appears that c remains the same but yes. even though it changes uh, the 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 c which appears to have changed less was the terrible terribly transient feet you know when you stand on the uh, water uh, yes. uh, the sea so you must have seen you must have felt and it come the water comes and takes away the sand, sand. yes so what does it take away it's almost like taking away a time. memory a time. moment time, time. and yes. we are also growing yes. learners learners let's understand the point is not just describing an event in which the two cousin girls and and the poet's Her mother, mother we're walking yes sir. Know, it's something else has gone and you can't stop your growing yes and nothing is permanent as far as your body and life is concern, concerned that's one second is your youth will not be permanent that's what the mother with a smiling face that was before i was born now it's gone yes then then but what has not changed hmm. what has not changed the sea water Sea water and sea yeah. has not changed. Sea has not changed. Mm. Yes. So that means the world, the earth, is not changing not much, yes. but you are changing. So understand how time. This is what the poet says. Come on. Kriti will read out the second part of the poem. Then we will continue the discussion. Yeah. Sure, sir. Mm -hmm. Some twenty, thirty years later, she would laugh at the snapshot. See, Patty and Dolly, she would say. and look how they dressed us for the beach the sea holiday was her past mine is her laughter both wry with the labored ease of loss very good look at look at it uh, the mother what the mother would say she after 30 30 what's it 30 years 30 years 20 30 years later later what she will say she would she is almost like describing the photograph and she is laughing at the uh, with 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 what that with 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 the uh, with, with with smile and she also making fun of it mocking yes, at it oh yes. how i how did i do that could i do that kind of thing you know sometimes how were we dressed up oh uh, yeah the same thing kuswan singh was describing i never believe i never would uh, uh, accept this old lady was once young, young and yes. pretty he says you know sometimes you know our grand uh, parents we would refuse to believe oh they were young they were like uh, boys and girls they were um, playing in the ground the way and they did mischief because now they are altogether a different yes, personality yes. so look look at the uh, line uh, look how they dressed up as so she could not believe that such a dress she can wear now but the important line here is the sea holiday was her past the sea holiday was her past mine was her laughter look at as we grow from childhood to youth to the adulthood then we simply losing our actually the zeal of life in one way and we we forget smiling and we become so serious with our uh, career business materialistic concern make money build house buy buy vehicle this that so the the worldly things mundane things occupy our actually zeal for life that that will look at the line the sea holiday was her past then mine is her laughter, laughter. then he says both roy with labored ease of loss w r y is pronounced as roy r a i in a way so that means the thing which is taken away uh with the labored ease of loss you you work hard you work hard but it's it's also it's, being lost yes. look at it look at it i'm i'm going to read out the second part of the poem again to you some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot it's a snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed up for the beach that means they were differently dressed not actually for the beach yeah the sea holiday was her past and mine is her laughter for me her laughter was gone because she was a young girl very young girl now grew up married gave birth to children beauty uh, her happiness everything is almost losing particularly from the feminine point of view gender point of view uh, countries like india and elsewhere women once get married responsibilities come and their actual goal for life is gone how it is gone both roy with the labored ease of loss that means you labor 
you do so there are many thing you see the the child birth pain is called labor pain yes so giving birth to children this labor is of loss but so but you feel happy also as you as you do, do hard work and make money live make a life and bring up your children but you are losing something yes that is what the poet says come on let, now let's look at the third uh, part of the poem uh, kriti is reading out sure sir now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all it is silence silences. Yeah. Now, now, now look at the last part you have read out now she has been dead nearly as many years that as that the girl lived who is that girl? So that girl uh, might be the poet. Poet yes. because the, he says that she was laughing before I was born. born yes. so, most likely the mother may have died soon In, after the birth of the child yes. and of these circumstances there is nothing to say at all. Uh, she is not blaming, oh uh, 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 the mother passed away long ago, this is a uh, curse, this, that and God is, was not good to us. No, he said I am not saying anything about the circumstances, this is what the life has been lived. There is nothing to say at all, but what is to say? It is silence, silences. It is silence. Silence. Who's silence? So the mother's silence as well as the poet's silence and because her mother is not with her, mm. so she cannot hear her laughter and have a conversation. So that silence and then the poet's silence. So that's one. And now, what about the silence in the picture? Though they are in the seashore, and seashore is not silent. You yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, that roaring Waving sound of uh, yeah, waves. Uh, waves and the people there is full of life in this yes. uh, at the seashore but still the photograph is silent so it silence silences. silences so learners there are times we sit back even though lot of noise is happening around us and reflect be quiet sometimes that's why people uh, advocate nowadays suggest do yoga it's nothing yeah. but looking into yourself you you may sit alone and be there without thinking or thinking introspection, thinking into yourself. This is how the silence silences. The very silence itself is silencing. silencing so, yes. sometimes you know uh, you sit alone, you hear more noise in your brain, uh, in your mind than you, the, the noise around, <laughs> around and you yes. speak. Come on learners, this is how we should appreciate the poem. We are going to have some discussion on that. Kriti, yes, I am going to throw at you and the learners some questions. What does cardboard denote in the first line? So, the cardboard must be a frame or on which the photograph uh, was That is fine, that is fine, that is what the physical aspect I mean. Yeah. What does it suggest? It's so, it suggests the time, the old oldness. Okay. Yes. Okay. What is paddling? They are paddling. So, paddling might be they must be on a uh, boat. No, not uh, yeah, that is also paddling. That, uh, the boat in which uh, we physically paddle. Uh, that is one. Yes. And there is even walking on the uh, seashore, uh, water comes and touches your feet. Yes. And that is also paddling. Okay, sir. Uh, that is what this is what uh, when you go on picnic, we go on paddling, school okay. children. Okay, sir. That is Who is the big girl? So, the eldest one described in the poem is the poet's mother. Oh, fine. Yes. Sir. And who is the narrator of the poem? So, the narrator of the poem that is the poet was not born at that time. Fine. But he, she looks at the poem uh, of the other uh, picture after 30, he says 20, 20 30, 30 years, years, 30, 40 years. Yes. Then, uh, then, then um, there is a problem with the uh, poet here. Let me take that then look at the second part of the poem. Some 20, 30 years later, she would laugh at the snapshot, see Betty and Dolly, she would say, and look how they dressed us for the beach. That means the mother may have lived later. Sir, it could be that also, but uh, we can interpret it in this way that the mother must be talking to her cousins who were in the photograph, Betty and Dolly. Fine, it is one, one interpretation, we can take it. So, uh, so the sea holiday was her past, the mother must, must have later said, 
the sea wa holiday was her past and mine is her laughter. laughter. She stopped, I could not see her laughing anymore, yeah. even if she had continued to live or passed away, both wry with the laboured ease of loss. Look at it, every we are born, we grow up, we keep losing things. The first and foremost thing is we losing our, we are losing our age, age. and our skin in a way, mm -hmm. our beauty, our wealth, but we are gaining something else. What do, th what do we gain? is what we lose. Yes. So, that is what also learners, we, the way we like to gain things, acquire things, we should also be able to lose things, that is what. Okay. Now, I am going to ask you, why does the poet say, was the terrible transient feat? Sir, it must be the time. Uh, when they were standing on the seashore mm. and the water, the waves were taking away the sand beneath their so feet. So, it is transient. So, it must be temporary. Temporary. The mm. time is temporary. That moment is temporary. So, can I? I'm going to take the learners to another level, saying that you you stand on the seashore, then the water, the sand is sl slightly eroding by the water, eroded by the water, the same way you are living on this earth. Yes. So, you will be expecting any time any loss, this is what. Narrator's mother laughs at the snapshot, why at the, at the picture? Sir, so it must so, it must be because of how the picture is taken, what, uh, like the description we uh, we are given in the poem. See, uh, See how say. they dressed us for <laughs> the beach. Okay. So, they must be laughing at the uh, dresses yeah. they uh, were I wearing. I was dressed and, like this. Yes, I, I never wanted, I was dressed yeah. like this. Okay. Even when we see our older pictures, we laugh, like what are we wearing? <laughs> yes. Or in, true, true, yes. true. What is the meaning of the line? both rive with the laboured ease of loss. Sir, it meant that the poet was completely lost, uh, I would say, mm. that he, she could not come forward uh, about the loss she is talking about. Okay. Uh, and, and the temporary, temporary uh, 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 time uh, and the sense of time yes, and the life. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, and W R Y is pronounced as rye. Okay. Can you, can you say some more words in which W is silent? Uh, so, I can think of wreath. Wreath. That is uh, spelled as W R E A T H. Wreath. Yes. So, we, we place wreath on people who die. Pass, uh, die. Yes. So, it is a kind of flower kind of thing, uh, mm, then we garland kind of thing we make. Yes. So, that is one. Then? So, one I could think of is wrath. Wrath, okay. Anger. Yes, which is spelled as W R A T H. Okay. Uh, which is spelt as uh, W R A T H, wrath, but uh, pronounced as wrath. Wrath, yes. Okay, then another is rot. Yes. W R O U G H T. Uh, what is it? Oliver Goldsmith or someone said, more things are wrought by prayer than the world dreams of. When, 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 when people are in trouble, the best way is to be silent and pray for it. Come. So, then the one, one, one another thing, what does this circumstance refer to? He says, let me read out the line for you. She had been dead nearly as many years as that the girl lived and of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It silence silences. What is the circumstance? So, the circumstance must be the present time the poet is living in. Not only and that. She cannot talk about because her mother is not there with her. So, she cannot talk about that circumstance. Okay, not only this circumstance, the other, uh, past also. Past also, yes. There is nothing to say at all. There are moments when, when two people after a long uh, uh, gap of uh, when so being away, when they meet, they won't nothing to speak about. Then when all and a sudden some uh, b the, the most loved one passes away, yes. we, we, we do not know what to do. Yes. So, there is nothing to say at all. What happened? Why? It is silence silences. It's, what does it mean? Why? It is silence silences, meaning it is silence that silences. Okay? Yes. Why? 
in the poem and in so as you have told us earlier as well it, the photograph silence is also uh, silent in a way that we cannot hear the seashore waves or no. we cannot hear the laughter so it's the silence in the photograph fine so, let me ask you who are silenced what is silenced so at that present moment the poet is silent okay because because she is uh, after seeing the photograph she's uh, revisiting all the memories of her mother laughter her mother convict now all those have led the poet to to being silent that's what yeah learners silence conveys much more things than noise yeah so that's what this is saying you know what is it if 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 speech is silver silence is golden this is an old epithet and and that doesn't mean you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be speaking wherever needed you should be speaking you are young people you should be speaking and learning new things so let's listen to the poem once more from your voice now read it again then we'll have one or two activities for them to do Come okay on. sir yeah. sure sir a photograph The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling each one holding one of my mother's hands and she the big girl some 12 years or so all three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born and the sea which appears to have changed less wash their terribly transient feet some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed us for the beach the sea holiday was her past mine is her laughter both dry with the labored ease of loss now she's been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all is silence silences that's right thank you very much learners listening to the poem or uh, and reading out the poem as many times possible in order to understand uh, is very important why because every time you read a poem it it gives you another layer of meaning okay we have come to the close of this lesson i'm going to ask you to do two tasks one is you ask your grandparents or mother to give you a old album and pick up a picture of yours or anybody's and try to describe it what the picture the photograph conveys this is one second is you have listened to the poem we have discussed it you read the poem again reread it then write the summary of the poem in let us say 10 sentences thank you very much learners we have taken you to the memory lane for some time you also if you have elders at home grandparents in your neighborhood talk to them that's very important how they were as as children uh, what what happened to them uh, uh, then how they lived their life and how your life is different from them this is important and this is how you must have noticed one picture of uh, gandhi uh, a, a child is leading yes, him yes, so uh, uh, that that child uh, died 2 3 years ago at the age of 70 80 or something uh, it was his distant relative he li- he lived in uh, usa that was the time that that child was leading him for the dandi march that salt satyam so, satya, satya. Yes, so every picture every image on this earth conveys something so learn to appreciate it then learn to talk about it so that life can be something together thank you very much learners we'll meet you in the next lesson next episode thank you kriti thank you sir for, for having, having participated thank you sir